already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. So in my last video, I told y'all we just hit 321,000. It's a major milestone. Crazy enough, we're about to hit 323. We're moving at about 1,000 a week, um, sometimes more. But we roughly stay around 1,000 a week. I want to say thank you. Couldn't have done it without y'all. I can't subscribe to myself like I guess I could. But I can't do it 323,000 times. So once again, without you guys, I would not be anything. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to everybody that's been here since day one. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. Now I'm going to give you some solid advice. This is some very good advice. Don't be messing with those guards. Leave the guards alone. I've personally dealt with it. I had a mouth on me. There was times where I was just, I was frustrated. I was out of control when I wanted to, I just wanted to rebel, right? No, no, no. You want to rebel? Go in your cell, kick the wall, do something. Just don't mess with them boys. They will whoop you. Whoop you decent. And guess what? The law is on their side. If one officer whoops you and another one comes along, he ain't even got to have nothing to do with it. But say, hey, I saw what he did. Yeah, man, Jay got all reckless and went off on the guard. Well, here's what's going to happen. Not only is he not going to get in trouble, but you are now going back to court. You're going to the hole. You'll carry a whooping a lot of times. Not all the times, but sometimes you will carry a whooping. But when you go back to court, they're going to give you more time. So you take a certain amount of time that you already had in prison. And now you take this new time from this new crime, this new charge you've just got, you put them together. Now you ain't going home for an extended amount of time. Why? Because you wanted to mess with the guards. I've seen it range from dudes having a bad phone call. Get off the phone. I'm on the phone. And hang the phone up. And the guard in control booth hangs the phone up in the middle of this dude arguing with his girl. And the next thing you know, his anger went from the phone call to, why you hang the phone up? I was on the phone. With my... And they start going at it. I've seen dudes in the hole get frustrated, big frustrated because they're locked in the hole. And start taking it out on the guard. And tell them the first time I get around you, I see you, anything is going down. And it happens. They get out the hole, they're out in general population, they're walking around. And them and this guard come past each other. And next thing you know, it's boop, bop, boop, boop, bop, 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 bop. And you're going to lose. There is no win in the situation. Because even if you whoop him and you whoop four or five other guys, guess what? You're going back to court. He's going home, you're going to jail. Now I've seen dudes get into a guard and say, what you going to do, put me in prison? Or you going to lock me up? You going to send me to jail? <laughs> you going to lock me up? The guy that's already locked up, man, I'll whoop you. And you ain't going to do nothing about it. But it's a whole different story when you fast forward past that release date. And now, big dummy ain't gone home. Nah. He wanted to let his temper get the best of him and show out on this dude and put hands on somebody. And now, you are home. At least for the next few years or however much extra time you got. Might as well call home. You better, you better call Tyrone. Yeah, because somebody's going to be laid up with you. You already know, man. Get home to your people. Leave them guards alone. Let's get into today's story. With all that being said, you know how to see it. You know how to live it. So let's relive it. I got a homeboy here in Virginia's Department of Corrections. Talk to him off and on throughout the years. Not as much recently, but... That's not my fault. That's on him. He's one of them dudes that he'll call, and then he won't call for a long time. But let's go ahead and get into it. I had talked to him previously about doing this video, and I was supposed to have been done it, but some other things came up, and I've been enjoying the time, just relaxing, chilling. Got a homeboy named A-Town. Y'all remember back in the thousands for my hip-hop heads and people listening to rap, the whole A-Town stomp thing that was taking over? Atlanta was real big on the music scene. Uh-huh. A-Town came to Virginia, and the place he went to, I don't understand why he was even going there. This is a black dude. I just know he was from Georgia, so they gave him the name A-Town. But this is a man that's 5'10", 5'11". He looked taller, but I'm not going to put him at six feet. So we're just going to say 5'10". Muscular-ass dude. One of the dudes you look at him like, damn, how long you... When did you start lifting weights? Like, Ken, like you're huge. Good sized dude. He's one of those dudes when he walks in the pod, you look at him and you don't have no thoughts of, oh, we're going to go extort him. No, that's not going to happen. He's got the typical jailhouse tattoos on him, prison tattoos on him. At first glance, doesn't look much different than a lot of these dudes in here other than his size. He was stand off and shy, quiet, if you might say, and very selective in who he kicked it with. When he got to liking my celly. When I say liking my celly, like, they were both country dudes. I had a celly from Danville, Virginia, which is a country part of Virginia. 
But for whatever reason, he ends up going to Franklin, Virginia. I have never met any black people that came from Franklin. I don't think I've ever met any black people that said they went to Franklin. So I don't know why he was going to Franklin. He never got into why he was going to Franklin. Just said he was going to Franklin, Virginia, and he got pulled. I can promise you he got pulled going to Franklin, Virginia because he's a black man. You know what Franklin is known for? Moonshine. Franklin County will always be known as the moonshine capital of the world. That's what they're known for. Everybody I've ever met from Franklin talked about their moonshine and the other things that they make out in the woods out there, right? So for whatever reason, he gets pulled in Franklin, Virginia. And of course, they search the car. And do you know what they find in the car? A loaded, stolen firearm in possession by a felon. That's five years in the state of Virginia. Do not pass go. Do not go home free. None of that. You're not. No, you're going to prison. You get caught with a gun. He gets caught with his gun. Ain't from Virginia, but it's now Virginia property. Five years he gets. Goes through his trial process at boop bop. Next thing you know. I meet him as he's talking to my celly. Now, this is a dude that, very humble, very, very humble. One of them dudes that if you get to run in your mouth, he knows what he can do to you, but he don't want to do it. He wants to go back to where he's from because Virginia ain't his state. So the last thing he wants to do is run up his time here because you got to run in your mouth and he knocked all your chicklets out your mouth. So I've seen him on more than one occasion. Like, man, you got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. And you can tell when he's arguing with these dudes or the dudes I've seen him argue with that it would not be very hard for him to beat that dude up, do something really bad to that dude, but he would give the dudes the benefit of the doubt. Go ahead, man. You got it. Yeah, y'all know. Yeah, you whoop me. I know it. Yeah, you right. Put your hands on me. Yeah, you right. Look, I ain't gonna argue with you. Go ahead. Humble. That's what humble is. Letting something live, letting something slide. Don't let nothing die. Don't kill nothing, right? Now, with him being from out of state, he didn't get visits. You never seen nobody come see him. Every Saturday, Sunday, names got called. I go to visitation room. My homeboys, other people go to visitation room to their family. A-Town ain't getting no visits. Talking about something, I ain't even gonna try to have my people. Like, I don't even want my people to ever even come back to Virginia. We came out here one time and I'm in prison, man. Well, I mean, you probably should not have came to Virginia. You was going to Franklin County. You didn't need a gun. You could have, you didn't need a gun, man. I mean, well, you, I mean, at second thought, I don't think there's any black, there might be some black people, but I don't think there's really that many black people in Franklin. You, should, you might need a gun. Yeah, you actually... I recant that. You might have needed a gun. But maybe you should have had somebody else have the gun that wasn't a convicted felon and had it on their person or... Anyways. So with that being said, he would get money, but it wouldn't be like he would get large amounts of money. Or it wouldn't be like he got money every week. So you might see him hit the store once every few months and he would load up. He'd get his, you know, tobacco. We could still smoke the time. He'd get his tobacco products and he'd get his coffee and his soups and everything he needed to survive. But a lot of the stuff he got, he hustled with the cigarettes, the loose tobacco, the black and miles, the chewing dip, chewing tobacco, the coffee, the coffee being one of his biggest hustles. These were things that he would hustle to get him from store day until the next store day, which might be two, three months down the road. So as he takes these, these cigarettes and breaks them down and breaks his tobacco down, these blacks, always these packs of blacks and sells off singles, this is going to ensure that food continues to come in. It's going to ensure that he doesn't starve because he's not trying to be a burden on nobody. He don't want to make his people have to send money every single week that they don't got. So he gets into hustle mode. Like I said, with the coffee, that was one of his biggest hustles. He would take a glove. And I've seen it done so many times. I've done it. It's a good way to come up real quick. And you just take a shot of coffee, stick it in the instant coffee, dump it in the finger of the glove, pull the finger of the glove off like a little sack, like a, like a Nick sack, tie it off, boom, rip it off. And now that's a stamp. Or in some place you can get two soups for it, depending on how much the soups cost. Well, that's what he was known to do. It was like this dude was trapping in prison. This dude's walking around with, with bags of tobacco. He's walking around with bags of coffee. And he kept them on. He tied up like Nick and Dime sacks. A lot of the guards knew what he did. They would see him passing off tobacco, passing off coffee. It's not illegal. They sell it on commissary. And you got to really run up against a dickhead that's going to be like, oh, well, come here. What did you got? What do you got? What do you got? And that's exactly what he does. Now, when we get these rookies, these rookies come in and they're looking to make a name for themselves. Don't be the reason they make a name. Don't let them make a name off you. Pretty much try to avoid them. You can stand back and watch. A lot of times they come in with a chip on their shoulder. You're like, oh, look at this dude, man. Like, he's just messing with people. Are oh, you shaking people down? Why is he taking that from dudes allowed to have that? Leave that guard alone. A-Town goes to the chow hall one day. He brought stuff out to the yard. We ain't had wreck in several days. And he the gave this dude tobacco. And this dude's got a pain for it. He can't get it. He needs his food. Tell somebody else in that building, hey, just tell him, bring it to chow. 
I'll get it from him there and smuggle it back to the building. I need mine. I'm on empty. I ain't got no food. I ain't got nothing. All I got is this coffee and tobacco. I need mine. So he's in the chow hall. They pass it off. He takes it from dude's jacket. We wear these big blue jackets with these orange liners on the inside. We'll cut the inside of the liner to stuff the inside of the jacket with all the soups and cookies and zoom zooms and wham whams or whatever you're trying to smuggle back to the building. And it's very typical that if you're coming up out the chow hall and you've got something on you, you don't want to get caught with, you get somebody to block, somebody to throw the okie doke, somebody to sacrifice themselves. Hey, come on, man. Go ahead and make it look good for the people one time. Search me for the one time for the one time. And they step up and let the guards search them. And meanwhile, boom, your homeboy slides on by. A bunch of guys slide on by. Why? You stand there BSing with them. You ain't find it yet. Search right there. Oh, you got the package now. You got, oh, I, I, man, that's all me. Get up off me. So homeboy throws the block so A-Town can slide by. But no sooner A-Town goes to slide by, another officer comes out. You got Chow Hall A and you got Chow Hall B. Another officer comes out and says, hey, you with the jacket. Come here. It's June. What the hell you got a jacket on for? Come here. So A-Town comes over there and he tells him, man, look, I'm just trying to eat, man. I ain't doing nothing wrong. I ain't breaking no laws. Got a little commissary on me. I ain't got no food in the box. I don't get no money like that. Just let me let me slide on to the bill with this little soup stuff. Go ahead and empty your jacket out. Come on, man. Ain't nothing but a couple of little soups and some of this and some of that. Ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got no shank on me. You know what I mean? Ain't like I got a bomb in the jacket. Like, let me slide on through. Empty your jacket out. He done ran into Deputy Doof. <laughs> Top flight security of the world, Craig. Empty your jacket out. So A-Town takes us. Hi, man. Starts throwing the suits and stuff on the ground outside the chair. Uh-huh. 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 Give me your ID. We wear these prison IDs. Flip to our pocket. Takes his ID. I'm writing you a charge. Contraband. Man, look. At the last thing this man wants is to catch an institutional charge. That is going to mess up his release date. He's already not from this state, doing five years in a state that he's never really done any time in. And I mean done time, like not even hung out in. But you're not going to write him a charge that's going to push back his release date. So his family's looking forward to him getting out on one date. But because you just wanted to write him up for some soups, for wanting to be able to eat in the middle of the night, for wanting to be able to eat like the majority of the other men, you're not going to write him up. And now his date that he goes home is going to change. So him and A-Town get to arguing. Man, you gonna write me up? Man, that's some bitch shit. Like, why Why you? Why would you do that? Come on, man. You took the commissary. I'm already not gonna eat. Now you trying to mess with my livelihood, mess with my release date? This is one of the few times I've seen him get out of pocket. I told you he's a humble dude. He's a dude that isn't looking for no static. But if you push, he gonna push back. And the guard, go on now. Go on now. You read about it. You go ahead. You'll read about it. You'll read about it. He's still running his mouth. A-Town's walking off. A-Town's running his mouth off. Man, I was, what'd you say? You'll do what to me? Do is tell you time, go on, man. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Come on, man. That man going he gonna hit you with it. He gonna tell the people you trying to threaten him. He gonna get you gone. Get you sent up to a higher level. Take all your good time. So A Town walks off. Nah, nah, nah. I'm still running his mouth, but now he's more or less mumbling, looking back at dude in the guard. Is not even searching nobody no more. He just standing there with his commissary, like he just got a big bust or something. Like he just got fifty pounds out the trunk with a chopper. Like real proud of what you did, dickhead. You just took ten soups and you didn't do nothing. Congratulations. You'll you'll do great here, buddy. A Town comes in the pod, goes on to a cell, and he's in there telling his cellmate, Man, I swear to God, I da da da. And you can hear him yelling from the cell. He's hype, big, angry. We lock in for count. Later that evening, we lock in for count. Officers come in and start counting us. All right, we got two in cell, such, such, two in cell, such, such. Damn, you can't, that's only four. What you mean? What? How do you got seven? Recount. So they're counting. They get by eight times, sir. Eight times. Hey, let me holler at you, man. Let me look. You took the commissary from me. I'll holler at you about the charge. I ain't got nothing to say. We count right now. Now, look, look, look. This won't take but a second, man. Don't write me no charge. I ain't got nothing to say to you. Don't interrupt. Count. We count right now. You must want a new charge. So eight times start snapping out. Man, you a real bit. You already know, man. How you want to always be writing somebody some charges? You ain't got no control of your own life. Your kids think you're stupid. Your kids say you can't read. Your wife, like, he starts going in on dude. They leave out. Now, this is what we call the 530 count. This is the count after child. Now, count would usually clear around 615, 630, at which time they would pop our doors. We go outside to night rack. We stay outside to about 845, sometimes right at 9 o'clock. 615 rolls around, and you hear it. You hear count clear. They got these loudspeakers. Count is now cleared at such, such. Count is now cleared at such, such hours. Pop the doors. Very calm. Open the doors. Let us out. Nobody want to be in these cells. Open the doors. It's hot. Ten minutes goes by. Dude start kicking the doors. Open the doors. Fifteen minutes goes by. It's now 6.30. Doors ain't open. All types of dudes yelling from all types of directions. Open the doors. The office comes over to the loudspeaker. 
We got a situation. We'll pop the doors. You have the situation resolved. Please stop kicking the doors unless you want to be a part of the problem. Thank you. Now, at this point, I'm sitting on my bunk. I'm not, I mean, I hear the noise going on, but there's nothing really out the ordinary for me to get up and go to the door and, I guess you could say, be nosy and see what's going on. But I'm sitting on my bunk. I'm watching my TV. Just finished watching the news. About to switch it to another program when I hear a slider open. Shit, clang, pop. That's the door front. Everybody knows that noise if you've been locked up. And that noise lets you know somebody's coming in. We're all locked in ourselves. So it's not a possibility of an inmate. That's definitely 100% some type of a correction officer or something. I get up. Go stand at my door and look out. There's four guards coming in. What they doing? I don't know, man. They ain't recounting. They already, they cleared count, so it can't be no no recount. I don't, I don't know what they, hold up. They going to A-Town, so they going to your homeboy cell, man. What they doing with A-Town? What they going to do? What, what they were doing with, yeah, they at your homeboy. What are they doing with A-Town? Why they messing with A-Town? I don't know. Maybe because they got the argument the count. I don't know. So my cellie comes over. We both stand there. We sharing the slot, trying to look out at what's going on. And we hear them cough up. Tough up for what? Because you keep making threats. You keep running your mouth. I, I fear for my life. So you have to cuff up. We both can't be around here. I work here. I live here. Nah, you going to the hole. You're not going to make me fear to walk around here. Every time I see you, you want to talk, pop, fly out your mouth, do this and that. Man, ain't nobody threatening you. Ain't nobody cuff up. I ain't cuffing up. Cuff up. I ain't cuffing up. Cuff up. Man, don't write me no more charges. At this point, he's more or less pleading with the man. Don't write me no more charges, man. You ain't got to take me to hold. You took my little commissary. I tried to talk to you. You treated me like an asshole. I tried to talk to you. You treated me like a dickhead. So you can run your mouth, but I can't run my mouth. He's still telling A-Town cuff up. I'm not cuffing up. We got one refusing to cuff up. We're going to need extraction. Words you don't want to hear. Chances you getting hurt during an extraction are very, very high. Because when they come in, their job is to push you towards the back of the cell, smush you, crush you, flatten you down, and eventually get you in cuffs. This may be anything from being tased, pepper sprayed, I mean, hit with a shock shield, hit with a ram shield. There's a lot of different things. You're definitely going to get hit with some knees, some elbows, a couple of fists when nobody's looking. And you got to remember, at this point in prison, they weren't recording cell extractions. So whatever you said happened, usually ain't what happened. Because you got all of them that are going to stick together and... What happened? He, he hit his eye when he fell. His whole eyeball popped out. I know. It's crazy. The greatest thing i ever seen. Like somebody punched on him. I, he, he fell four times. They keep going back and forth. Eight times telling him, I'm not cuffing up, man. I ain't done it. Hey, get the sergeant down here. Get the sergeant down here. Sergeant comes on down. Hey, look, Mr. Such, such you need to cuff up. I'm not cuffing up, man. Listen to me. Just hear me out what I got to say. Like, y'all listen to him. Hear what I got to say, man. Why can't nobody listen to me? Look, sir, you need to cuff up. My officer said you need to cuff up. Officer fears for his life, feels threatened by you. You need to cuff up. We'll figure it out when you get to the hole. I'm not cuffing up. Not near one of these dudes. None of the guys standing outside that cell were as big as A-Town. So now he's done got hype. Well, if y'all going to do it, then do it. Do it. I don't bother nobody. I leave everybody alone. Who's going to come get me? Come get me. Come get me. Who's first? Who's coming through the door? Nah, look, you need to calm down. So... At this point, we know what he's doing. We've never seen it before, but what you're going to do is you're going to strip down to your boxes and you're going to wet the floor with whatever you got. It can be baby oil, it can be fish oil, it can be lotion, it can be water and shampoo if that's all you got, but you want to get something slippery and get it on the floor right when they come through the door so that they slip and your area is dry. And then as they're trying to get a hold of you, you can just do what you got to do and maneuver with them. We hear him in the cell, let's do it then, let's do it then. I can only imagine his cell, he probably climbed on the top bunk, was like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with this. They about to whoop all on this dude. Dude tripping, man. They, God, they gonna tear the cell up. They gonna, God, he gonna be bleeding everywhere. Like He goes in and prepares for the extraction. I'm not coming out. Y'all coming to get me. Who's coming in first? So what he did was he made his concoction and put it on the floor, whatever it was, to make it slippery. Right when you first come through the door, and then he skipped a space right there and did another slot of slipperiness. So he could step over the slipperiness. But what you don't take into account is no sooner they come through the door, everything's going to get slippery. There was no point in ever even keeping a dry spot because their boots are going to drag all that oil all over the floor. Better part of 10 minutes passes and more officers are now showing up. There's 9, 10 officers standing outside the cell. Now you got some bigger boys standing outside the cell and they looking at it. Who is it? Oh, damn. I'll rock the shit, man. These dudes got shields, they got helmets, but they're still scary. Don't nobody want to get hurt. You don't know what type of weapon he might have. He's real angry at this point. And it's very clear that this ain't going to just be a go in and turn around and cuff up. No, he's going to start hooking off. They pop the door. This is what I did not expect. They pop the door. This man has done put baby oil all over the first, like, I don't know, probably two, three feet of the floor right there when they come through the door. So you've got to track through this baby oil, this, this concoction of what he's got on the floor. And at that point, your boots are real slippery, like walking in Vaseline. 
They come through the door and the other ones come through the door and you can see them as they're going through. Boy, Atlanta, snap. Listen, what? Guards rush to the door and all you hear is commotion. You hear tumbling, you hear men falling, you hear men flipping. And you got other guards standing outside the door trying to get in the door. But these are not big cells. So you're not going to put 10 people through that door into that cell. At that point, y'all would just be falling over top of each other. And that's already what's taking place. A-Town is in there stroking off on these guards. Boom, boom. Fighting with everything he's got. But now it's, it's turning into a big ice capade. Everybody in there slipping. Grab, grab it onto this one. Grab it onto that one. And meanwhile, he stepped back and he's not in the order. He's just tagging everybody he can. Hooking off on him. Don't take long. It always ends bad. It always ends the same. You're going to end up in handcuffs. You go into the hole. They drag him out. They bring this man out. And he looks like, a, he looks like an eel. They got him on the floor and they did their worst to him and roughed him all up. And they finally got him cuffed and got his legs cuffed. And they bring him out like luggage. And he's slippery. He's shiny. They're slipping. And they tell him, hey, man, y'all go ahead and take a heap. They pass him off to some more people like he's a piece of luggage. And the ones that are all slippery and coated in this oil he put all over the floor, they hide and slip on the way out the pod. Let me tell you this. I didn't see a single officer that appeared to be hurt. I didn't see no blood. I didn't see no marks. Wasn't far from the incident. Good enough to see that. Everybody looks like ain't nobody limping, ain't nobody, oh, my arm, my arm, my arm. None of that. They come out toting this man like, yeah, they got a, a little thing on, you know what I mean? Like they had the little scuffle, but it didn't appear that anybody was seriously injured. Take eight town to the hole. So we fast forward four or five months. Another dude in the pod gets to arguing with a guard that was in that whole incident of everything that took place. And the guard says something that we didn't know about, we didn't expect. Kind of a nightmare for anybody that's locked up that's got a release date. Dude told the guard, I'll go outside your head. He said, yeah, and you'll get 20 years like that last boy that was in here. What? 20 years? 20 years? Did he have the brave heart in that cell? Did, did he have a pistol? Did he? What did he do to get 20 years? I wouldn't talk to A-Town again during that bid. I ended up catching up with him when I got out. They ended up charging A-Town with... Bunch of different malicious woundings, assault charges, all this stacked up, trumped up charges, in which he ultimately pleaded out to 20 years. And this is on assault on this officer, assault on this officer, this one, this one, and so on and so on. I think he got four years on each and every officer. One officer complained that he ripped his rotator cuff during the fall, and another one said that he sustained injury to his eye and blurred vision, and eight times seven, they railroaded me. I started off for five years in Virginia's Department of Correction. I know dudes that stabbed other inmates that didn't get 20 years. Don't be fighting with those guards. I told y'all in the beginning, if you have to and that's what you have to do and you're back into a corner, I'm not going to ever tell anybody not to defend yourself. Always try to find another route without taking it to violence. But y'all see how fast and how stupid it can escalate. This started over coffee, soups. The man just trying to make something to eat without having to burden people. Ran up across some old Johnny Go Lucky, Johnny Green Giant, Sammy Sausage Head Ass Guard who wanted to make a name for himself, who decided to come back and throw his weight around. But he was messing with a dude that wasn't going to have it. A Town is the only one I've seen wreck out with them cops. I've seen a whole lot of dudes just. Just get frustrated at the, at the end of their rope and be tired of holding on. You know what they say? When you get tired, tie a knot in that rope and hold on. Some dudes just get tired of holding on. They're like, I'm just going to give it to them. 20 years. With all that being said, I miss you guys as always. We're going to get back to the content. I'm not going to lie. I've enjoyed the little hiatus. Money continues to flow in. I'm doing great in life. I can't sit here and act like I'm broke or I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm doing great in life. And if you don't see me, don't think anything bad. Sometimes I just, I need some time for me. I need some time for the family. I need some time to work on the things I got to work on. But please believe this. I'll always, I'll always come back to you. Hope everybody enjoys their day. Hope everybody enjoyed the story. And y'all already know this is Jay Williams Let's Live Life. <laughs> but anyways, these streets, these jails, these penitentiaries, these dickhead guards, all just crazy world inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. That's all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute.